If you're like me, you use Procreate every day to design and render, but you keep hearing about this incredible app called Morfolio Trace, how it's specifically designed to work with architects with its scales and all. Well, I've had the very same concern. So today I'm going to use Morfolio Trace for the very first time live right here in front of you. And I'm going to use it to design and render a plan for a 3000 square foot contemporary home. Now, if you follow this channel, and you also know I'm a registered architect, a full-time renderer, and now a proud professor of iPad drawing at UCLA, and you know that when I start a design in Procreate, I often begin by sketching over images I find on the web, then make a bunch of plan diagrams, then scale up the best one using the rulers and the grids I've created for Procreate. But I've never worked with Morfolio Trace, and I'm a little anxious as to whether or not I'll be able to figure out the scales or be able to use the brushes to get the same rendering effects I love in Procreate, but here goes. The first step in Morfolio Trace is to launch a new canvas, but Morfolio Trace has real strength here, giving you a variety of common paper sizes to choose from and even allowing you to choose the scale you want to work in. They have even partnered with Apple Maps, so you can launch a new canvas within the app by entering an exact address. It's incredibly fast, and the map itself comes in linked to the Morfolio Trace scales. So yes, a 12-foot road really does scale to be 12-foot wide. But getting back to our project, I'm going to begin by launching a custom canvas, then choosing an 11 by 17 page size, then I assign a scale of 1 8th of an inch equals 1 foot. And now that my new canvas is launched, I'm going to add a new imported image layer and go to my iCloud drive to find the plan diagram I want to scale. When that diagram comes in, I take it by the handles and I push and pull it a little until it fits the page nicely. Then tap the check mark and we are good to go. I'm going to add a new layer and use the felt tip pen brush to make note of the dimensions I'll start with for the kitchen, the dining area, and the living room, all of which I'll use to determine the overall dimension so I can accurately scale up the plan. With the overall dimension in mind, I can now tap the wrench icon, select the scaling tool, position the scale crosshairs to coincide with my 66 foot overall dimension, Enter 66 feet in the data field, tap the OK button, and now when I tap the scale icon, the scale ruler pops up. It shows a width of 66 feet, and I can draw some dotted lines locating the boundaries I'll work to as I develop the plan. Now I can continue to design in freehand, but check important dimensions with the scale ruler as I go. I prefer to continue designing in freehand at this stage just because it gives me the most flexibility and allows me to see things in the freeform lines that I might otherwise not see if I'm trying to draft a plan. But I will use the scale to make sure that I'm keeping close and everything I'm doing is realistic. You can see in this detail that I'm going for an eight foot kitchen island I want to make sure enough stools fit around it and that there's adequate clearance to the dining room table. When the freehand plan is done, it's time to render it in color. The key here is to add a new layer for the colors, but to keep the freehand drawing of the plan as the top layer so the lines will always read clearly against the background color. For this rendering, I'm using the roller brush because it lets me quickly fill large areas of color in a very spontaneous way. But I also like that this technique reminds me of the Matisse cutout paintings and those great travel posters of the 1950s. And I use it a lot in my own Morfolio Trace and Procreate renderings. I've created this so-called crossover two palette ahead of time, so I don't have to stop and agonize over which color to use when. And now I'm going to work from large area to small, starting with the grass and the driveway and on and on up through the entire house and all on this single layer now highlighted in yellow at the right side of the screen. I'll speed this up now 
but you'll be able to see the long, slow, step-by-step -step version in another video coming soon. The important thing to notice is that I'm filling these areas one on top of another, and the colors are staying solid and only mixing very, very slightly. You can also see that I'm not very good at keeping my lines straight, but these uneven edges are what keeps the rendering loose and impressionistic, and that's a good thing at this early concept design phase. If you need to give one of your pre-made palette colors a little kick, just tap on the color adjustment icon and increase the saturation manually. It takes some getting used to when the leading edge of the roller brush sometimes covers up an area you're trying to work around, as in this deck surrounding the pool. But remarkably, it always does what you want it to do in the end. I want to make these ink topo lines integrate better with the rendering, so I'm going to use the roller almost like a magic marker and create long freehand stripes overlapping the lines, just to give the rendering a little more depth and character. With the exterior and interior materials done, all that remains is the trees. So I add a new layer just for the trees, tap the More Folio Stencils tab, tap the Stencil Setting icon, choose the tree stencil I like, position it using a two finger pinch, select the paint color and the actual paintbrush icon, then brush in the color to fill the stencil. Now I didn't end up loving this first stencil shape, so I changed it to another one and worked my way around the yard, still on the same layer. When I finished, I duplicated the layer, tapped the settings of the new layer, tapped scale and place, created an offset equal to the amount of shadow I wanted, then set the blending mode to multiply, and slid the opacity back up to 100%, creating the illusion of a shadow under every tree. Compared to the new trees, the underlying site plan now seemed a little anemic, so I duplicated that layer too, and that made the colors a bit richer. Now that the trees had shadows, I wanted to add some strategic shadows to make the plan and the furniture pop too. So I added another layer to the stack, selected a gray-blue shadow color to use with the roller brush, then used the same select and fill technique to strategically add shadows around the perimeter of the building and to add drop shadows under the furniture. I tend to use the multiply blend mode for the shadow layers so I see the detail underneath, but you can play with any of these other blending modes too to get the color and the effect that you want. As you know from a lot of my other videos, I think shadows are one of the most effective and simplest rendering techniques to really make your drawings pop and even when they're not mathematically plotted to be perfect, they give people a lot of information about what's up, what's down, and what you're emphasizing in your design. And as you get deeper into the drawing, the shadows really bring those small details to life, like this trellis form here at the entrance, or popping this table out in the dining nook, even popping the kitchen counters can really add depth and character to your renderings. I even go so far as to put little shadows behind the salad bowls and the tables and the chairs sometimes. It's so fast and easy to do this with this select and fill technique. It's actually kind of hard to stop yourself. But why stop yourself when it looks this good, right? As I get to this stage in the drawing, I like to do two more things. Adjusting the transparency of the layer to make that shadow color just right, and then going back in with an opaque white, really pop the last few details. If you would like to compare how I did the same project in Procreate, then check out the video link next to me or check out one of my Procreate for Architects playlists for all kinds of tutorials from beginning to expert. And I'll see you in the next video.